Although Hurricane Milton is an immediate concern, we aren't looking past the devastation of Hurricane Helene just yet. Independent journalist Brianna Morello claims that FEMA called her a liar when she said the agency is giving money to illegal immigrants rather than hurricane victims. Watch this response here. Throughout the week, I've been reporting how FEMA has been taking over a billion of our dollars that's intended for disasters and shifting it towards the illegal invasion going on right now in our country. Now, FEMA is addressing my report on their website right now, calling it a rumor, actually. They're saying that this is false. No money is being diverted from the disaster response needs. Interesting. That's very interesting that FEMA is now denying this. And the reason why I say that is, take a listen. Okay, I never, I never divulge who my sources are behind a story, but I'm going to do it now because I don't want FEMA calling me a liar. So my source behind all my reporting is actually FEMA itself. If you go to the same website, you search these headlines, guess what? They're on their own website. Okay, I pulled all of this information from their press releases. They've been bragging about giving our money away to the innovators for years now. Now, all of a sudden, they need more money from Congress. They're calling it a rumor. They're calling it a lie. They'll probably call it a conspiracy theory. But if you go to their website, and in case they delete it, we've got the archives, so don't you worry. Uh, and they're bragging about taking your money and giving it to people who are invading our country. It's unbelievable. So here to discuss is Matthew Peterson, editor-in-chief of Blaze News and Brianna Morello, host of the Brianna Morello Show. So it's a little convenient, right, for the federal government to come out right now and say, oh, this isn't true. And you have the documents proving that it is. Yeah, I mean, when the government's are source, it's kind of scary, I have to say, but they are my source behind the story. And they had no problem bragging about giving millions and millions of dollars to illegal aliens. Now, uh, it looks like it's been about a billion dollars in the last, I would just say, year alone that they've shifted over. Now, they're claiming that this money wasn't money meant to be used on disasters itself, but that's literally what FEMA is as a whole. So the fact that they're sending some of our money over to help with the invasion, help keep that going, uh, is concerning. And it, the worst part about all of this is while I was digging and trying to find all of this, I actually reached out to the audit group, Open the Books, and asked them if they had any information on FEMA itself. Uh, they did share, though, that FEMA actually has $8 billion sitting in bank accounts right now. Now, that money, according to Open the Books, is from previous disasters that they haven't actually paid out on, like Hurricane Katrina. I mean, it's been sitting in bank accounts for years now, but they want more money so that they could keep this invasion going. And so they have to beg to Congress. and They've tried to hide all of this. Um, so FEMA's out here calling it a rumor. But if it's a rumor, they started it themselves because it's on their own website. Well, it's on their own website. And the White House is also trying to back away from this as well. Let's take a listen to Corrine Jean-Pierre when she was contradicting about everything that FEMA and the migrants in that entire situation. It's just categorically false. No, Biden did not take uh, FEMA relief uh, money to use uh, to use on migrants. So FEMA regional administrators have been meeting with city officials on site to coordinate to coordinate available federal uh, support from FEMA and other uh, federal agencies. Funding is also available through FEMA's emergency food and shelter program to eligible local governments and non-for-profit non organizations upon request uh, to support humanitarian relief for migrants. Right, when I watch that, I just say... They have to think we're stupid, right? They, they know that these documents, as you have gone out and found on the FEMA website, that they were there on the website. We know that Corrine Jean-Pierre has said these statements. They are publicly available if people just go do the research. So what are we supposed to make of this? I mean, they just think that we're idiots and that you guys won't do your own research at home. I mean, that's just really what it all comes down to. I mean, they had no problem. Actually, and, and this is the one positive thing, right? You just saw the press secretary actually admitting that what's happening right now at our border is a disaster because that's what FEMA was set up for, was to handle disasters. And that's what they're using it for in that instance. So at least that's the one good positive thing about this. But again, they just think that you're not going to do your own research, to look into any of this, and that you're just going to go with whatever they put out there. Now, whenever the White House press secretary calls something disinformation, misinformation, um, I'm automatically interested in whatever they're trying to debunk. That's usually the truth at this point. And listen, the government should never be the kind of decider of what's real and what's not. It should be the American people, people who are actual journalists, not just propagandists. And um, we'll just let them decide at this point. But all the information's out there. All you do is a little bit of digging and you could find it yourselves.
Ben, what's crazy about this to me is all, all I have to do is say something like, look, of course we're spending billions of dollars for legal immigrants. That's what we do. You know we do it. We say we do it. But we also have billions of dollars for the victims of the hurricane. Don't worry. It'll be fine, right? Uh, or something along those lines. Just something that's that's realistic. Let's, let's move to uh, another controversy that you are in the middle of uh, with the governor, uh, Governor Cooper in North Carolina. I mean... It looked to me uh, like Governor Cooper is um, is critiquing all critiques of himself, uh, but you really stood up to him and said, look, next time, just at me, and have been talking about how he's basically also you know, accusing you and others of lying. What's this all about? Yes, I reached out to his office for comment before releasing my report. I've been speaking with people on the ground in North Carolina like you guys have, and um, I've also been speaking to our active service members who were flown in to help those in North Carolina, but for days were sitting on the sideline because the governor didn't give them the authorization to come in and conduct search and rescues. And so, so many Americans, um, and, and I hope they weren't killed by this, honestly, but the governor has some some questions that need to be answered for all of this because for over four days, they were sitting in places like Tennessee waiting for the governor to authorize them to enter and to save these people, and he never did it. And so I reached out to him, and I asked him, like, what's going on here? And nobody wanted to comment on any of this. They wouldn't want, they didn't want to respond to it. And so now he's calling it, like the key word they always do, disinformation, and, and they're using all those terms to kind of debunk it. But I'm still talking to people on the ground, even state lawmakers who are telling me that my my reporting is accurate and that it's even worse than what any American could possibly imagine what's going on right now in the mountains of North Carolina. So again, uh, they're going to dismiss it all and pretend like you shouldn't believe it. But when other people are saying, no, Brianna, you got it right. This is 100 percent accurate. This is what's going on. This is what we're seeing. And then they're sending me pictures. Um, I'm going to believe them over a politician who could possibly politicize up all of this. Yeah, it's such a horrific scene right there in North Carolina. But I want to look at Hurricane Milton now because you have evacuated Florida yourself. So tell us about your experience. Yeah, so I did head out. I headed out on Monday. Uh, once I saw what the storm was looking like, I kind of figured this is going to be a massive, massive hurricane. And I told others on X to also flee. But you have to flee early because uh, time and time again, we see, if you've lived in the state of Florida, that uh, there's a massive amount of traffic. Everyone's leaving. I mean, millions of people have left. And you're also going to have fuel issues. Um, they need to preserve the fuel that they have currently in the states. And um, I, I know a lot of people were kind of like going around and like, oh, wait, there's still fuel here, but it's marked that there is no fuel. A lot of that's being saved for first responders. They just don't want to advertise that. But um, I fled. I left the state. It's it's really bad. You know, driving up 75, uh, heading north towards Georgia, I was watching as all these as all these linemen were driving down south. Um, I, I'm being told, and thankfully, we have so many great Republican governors all across the state. They're sending their resources to help Florida in advance. Um, you know, Texas, I was talking to a lineman who's a friend of mine. I've known him since high school. And he called me and said, hey, I'm heading to Florida. Uh, so they're they're bringing people in from Texas and from all over the country to help out because we can't rely on our federal government. We have to rely on other states to help us out. And that's just the reality here that's going on right now under Biden and Harris.